Welcome back to Computer Networks. Uh, in the previous video, we had a look at an example client, uh, client application. And in this video, we'll have a look at an example server application. That, in fact, that, that client application we looked at in the last video could actually connect to uh, and do something. So let's bring that up. Okay, so if we look at from the beginning, uh, it's pretty similar to the boilerplate that we had uh, for the previous one. We've got those same five hash includes because we're gonna use the same kind of network functions. Uh, we also have uh, a server port definition and a max line definition, uh, the same as the other one, but now we've also got the max pending here, which we're setting to five. So this will get used a little bit later down when we uh, bind the socket and tell it to listen uh, for how many connections to be allowed to be backlogged at any point in time. So again, we have int main. Uh, in this instance, they've left out the, uh, uh, the command line arguments uh, because none are needed. Uh, we have the, uh, the struct socketer in, uh, which we're calling um, s in, which again will hold the, um, the address of the client uh, that's connecting to us. We have our buffer of size of the maximum line length for holding what we're reading in, uh, len for the actual length uh, and some other temporary variables. Then we're clearing out uh, the address structure uh, and then setting that to um, AF INET. So it's gonna be an IPv4 address that we're going to bind to. And then we're setting the source address to inadur any. And this is a special value that says accept connections on any and all interfaces on the host. If the host is connected to more than one network, you can have more than one IP address. And, or even on the same interface, you can sometimes have more than one IP address. So this one's actually saying, listen on all of those. Uh, and then we're telling it the port. And we have to do this H to, N, uh, H, um, to NS. So this is host to network uh, order short. So this is converting the 16 bit value of the server port um, to the network byte order. So we talked previously about the OSI model and this presentation layer uh, for having consistent things. So the IP, TCP IP stack doesn't have that. So instead we have to explicitly set, uh, encode it with a set byte order so that any host can actually decode that correctly. Uh, then uh, we set up the, uh, we, we create the socket rather. And if we have an error with that, we report that out as well. Uh, so this is not too dissimilar to what we had for the uh, the client at this point. But what we now need to do, because it's the server socket, we need to bind it. So this connects it to uh, that address that we provided. So in, in that case, it's to any and all addresses on this host. So now we're saying this socket is ready to receive connections on any and all um, IP addresses for this host. And then we tell it to actually begin listening for connections with the maximum backlog of max pending, which was five. And again, this doesn't actually do anything in terms of receiving a connection yet. It just tells us that we can now begin accepting connections. So now we have a, um, a while loop that we will repeatedly uh, sit here uh, and it will, uh, sorry, that curly brace actually closes uh, this one. This is a little bit interesting. I think there might be a curly bracket missing here. Hmm, it's be interesting to, to chase down. Okay, so while one, um, look for any new connections. So new S will get the socket for the accepted connection. So the server socket on S we reuse for each of these new incoming connections. Um, if we have an error receiving that connection, then we'll report the, an error message uh, and exit. So that curly bracket closes that one. Uh, and then once we have a connection, we will actually try and read uh, as many lines uh, of input as we can, or as many uh, packets as we can with um, RECV receive from the new connection and put them into the buffer. We tell the buffer the maximum size. We get the length as a returned output. And then we print the output of that to std out. Now there's no curly brace here, so only this one statement is actually tied to the while. Uh, what will happen after that is that we will close that socket, and then that curly brace will come back up here to the while, and it will look for a new socket. So for as long as uh, there are messages of 
uh, non-zero length, because again, we're doing an implicit test that uh, len is not zero, uh, it'll keep printing them out. Uh, and then eventually it'll go back and start looking for more connections. So again, we, we see a fairly similar structure to the client, except that here we have this repeated loop uh, and we have the bind and listen uh, directives uh, to allow us to receive the incoming connections. So that's the example server application.